Hey, is this thing on? Hello? Hit it again. I think it's on now. <clears throat> Welcome to Hiker Trash Radio, where each week, Doc will drag some colorful characters out of the woods to talk trail and type 2 fun. If you're aspiring hiker trash, or if you're just looking to understand the hiker trash in your life, look no further. So lace up those boots, gnaw on some jerky, and settle into your 20-mile pace as we fire up the podcast from somewhere deep in the backcountry. It's time to embrace the suck. Welcome back to another week on the trail, dirt bags, hiker trash, and of course, good smelling day hikers. I'm Doc, and this is Hiker Trash Radio. Hey, if you like what we're doing here, help us out. Take just a minute, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. And if you don't like what we're doing, well, just go ahead and keep that to yourself. All right, let's get to this week's guest, an adventurer from across the pond, who took a huge step this past year and hiked the Pacific Crest Trail. Welcome to Hiker Trash Radio, PCT through hiker Ash O'Brien. How's it going, Ash? Going really good. Yeah, it's really exciting to be here because I'm a massive fan of the podcast. So it's partly the reason why I did the PCT. So it's really surreal and exciting to be here. Fantastic. Thank you so much for coming on. And when I say across the pond, where exactly are you calling in from today? I'm from Belfast, Northern Ireland. Okay. And, you know, us Americans, we, we always get our, our uh, accents confused with, you know, we can't, sometimes can't tell if someone's from Ireland or someone's from Wales or someone's from uh, Scotland. I get, I get or, Scotland a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, South Africa, Australia, kind of. But, but I, I think I, your accent is pretty distinctive. I think I would have said Ireland. Yeah, yeah, I've I've heard all sorts. Like I think New Zealand was a common one. Scottish is another common one. But I don't know if it's with uh, Dairy Girls because I met a lot of people that uh, had watched that show. So maybe people are more familiar with the accent now. I love Dairy Girls. Hilarious! Oh, so it. so funny. I, three seasons, right? I, I enjoyed yeah. every every minute. It was awesome. Oh, I guess it's so good. And the funny thing is, like. All the characters to me, they seem like so real. You know, like Uncle Colin, the one that keeps going on and on. It's like everyone here knows someone like that. <laughs> Everybody's got an Uncle Colin in the, in their family. Yeah, yeah. That's that's fantastic. <laughs> that's right. Now, um, I'm always tickled to talk to somebody who is has been a uh, a listener of the podcast, has followed along as as we have evolved as a podcast. And I'm, you know, when I saw your post or or message about being inspired uh, to do the PCT from from maybe listening a little bit to the podcast, that that just, I mean, that's that's the purpose of this podcast of of my endeavor here is to, you know, help help inspire people to to do things they thought that you know they maybe they never would have done before. So, um, how did you find the podcast? Uh, do you know what I think? I was thinking about this the other day and I think I just was on Spotify and I searched like long distance hiking or something like that and it came up and it was actually the episode where you had gone on the PCT to do trail magic and that was the first episode I listened to but at that stage like you know something like the PCT you know I always thought something like that's amazing but I never ever considered it possible for myself and I think just from listening to other people and realizing like a lot of these people are normal people you know they're not like machines or like you know like it's normal people so I kind of got a bit carried away when because I, I would go for like you know walks and stuff and I knew I wanted to do something you know I didn't I didn't quite know what sort of hike you know I thought like at first I had planned like it was maybe like a 100 mile one and that was like that was big for me and then yeah, then I was listening to the podcast and I just got really carried away and then went in for a permit for the PCT. So it's kind of your fault. <laughs> <laughs> All my fault. You blame me uh, to your family and friends that you, you undertook that huge expedition. And I love that you said, you know, I, I, I went for walks. So, I mean, this is just a, a longer version of a walk, right? It's just, uh, you know, 2,650 it's, miles. It's just like yeah. a lot of shorter sections. Like, yeah, I just kind of had to think about it, to be honest, like that, because if you start something like the PCT and you're thinking about 
it ends cool like you just you can't even comprehend it at the start so you're just like okay when's the next town and then you know it's kind of like it wasn't too overwhelming then yeah it's just like 187 day hikes basically right yeah. strung strung together yeah <laughs> right <laughs> fantastic now ash um in all your time out on the pct did you pick up a trail name i did yes yep. and what is it 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 sounds cooler than it is, but my trail name was Zippy. And people think, oh, are you really fast? It's like not a cool story at all. Uh, so it came from, I was at like around mile 100 or so. And I, I still don't un understand how it happened, but I basically like zipped my hair into my tent in the door. Like, I think I was like coming out backwards. So like, I just had like my bum like out of the tent and like everyone else was sitting around like playing cars and having dinner. And after like, a good couple of minutes I was like I'm gonna have to ask for help and I was like guys and then it like <laughs> it took like two people and like one guy was saying I think we're gonna have to cut you out and like thankfully you know I think I would have got the knee and baldy patch if that had happened but thankfully like one of the girls got me out and everyone just thought it was really funny and uh so I got the trail name Zippy. Exiting the tent bum first. I honestly don't know what happened because I was on my way out but <laughs> Yeah, like it just, it went right over my hair and I like could not like get it out. Nice. And and thank goodness you didn't have to cut it out. So yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Zippy, Zippy, I may refer to you as Zippy throughout the episode. It's got, it's got yeah. kind of a flair to it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Zippy from Ireland. All right. Yeah. So you are a regular listener. You know that we have a segment towards the end of each episode that's called Hiking Hack where I will turn to you and ask you to share some trail wisdom with our listeners to make their next outdoor experience even better. So don't be surprised when we get there. Do you have something in mind already? Don't tell me what I it do. is, but I just, want to, I just want to know. I do, I've got a few things in mind. I was actually thinking about this while on the trail as well. So I've had a long time to think about this. Wow, she was prepping for the episode out on the trail. I was honestly like some of your questions, I like, just like past time, I'd be asking like other hikers like front and behind and I'd be like, what's what's your one piece of specific gear that you would bring? <laughs> you could have been my trail correspondent out there. We should have, we should have done some segments the from the trail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, you just referenced a, a segment. Let's get to it. Trailblazers Toolkit. That's right. It's time for the Trailblazers Toolkit, sponsored by the Ultralight Backpacking Gear Company, Six Moon Designs. Now, Zippy, I love to talk about gear on the podcast, as you know, and I love to hear about the most important item in my guest's adventure gear. So if you were preparing for your next adventure and I was the one providing you with all your gear, what is the one specific piece of gear you'd insist on being packed? Give me all the specifics on that piece of gear and tell me why you've got to have it out there. And this could be any kind of item. It could be gear. It could be apparel. It could be a luxury item. So Zippy, what is that item in your toolkit? Okay, this is hard. I changed my mind so much in this one because I feel like my gear, like I use every single bit of it and every single bit I'd say I couldn't do without, but I think I have to say, and this is one thing that people told me not to bring, but my down, okay, this is kind of gonna, I'm gonna cheat, this is kind of two, but I kind of count it as one. My down pants and booties, I have to say, and. I wouldn't even count them as luxury because I think I would have died without them because <laughs> it was just so cold in the evenings from day zero. In fact, I've got them here. Oh, show they, and tell. Yeah, but they still haven't been washed yet because <laughs> I haven't figured out how to wash down stuff, which is terrible. So they're sitting there till I figure it out. But yeah, they're honestly, these are not anything fancy. Like they're just like nature hike ones. Like they weren't. Yeah, they weren't very fancy, but I couldn't have done without these. And, and I am really surprised because I thought, and I never mentioned it because I knew I would have got this as a trail name, but you know, the Michelin man. Yes. Yeah, that was like every night, like that was me because <laughs> I had like my down coat, like those on my down socks. And honestly, they are, if you're a cold person, like I would sleep in them. If you're a cold person, like just sitting around at night, like I don't know how people do without them. And even the gloves, I or not gloves, sorry, socks. Like I wore them as gloves sometimes. So I, I, I have to give it to that because I use them a lot. You spread that foot smell all over. <laughs> Feet, your <laughs> you know hands. What? Actually, they don't, they don't 
smell that bad I must say no okay yeah because some of the stuff like when I was out there you know you kind of get used to like stinking and like everything being disgusting and like now I look at some of the stuff like my thermorest used to be yellow and it's just brown now and honestly those they don't really smell too bad but they definitely need a wash <laughs> but yeah right. game changer so- yeah, have you made this may be the first time anybody said down pants and booties as I wouldn't must, bring, them. Uh, must bring item. Yeah, yeah, honestly, the, like people were saying, you know, oh, you'll not need them. But I honestly, like, even on the coldest of the coldest days, I would hike in them very, very rarely. But like, yeah, but just more at night and just like, you know, I mean, I had like a 10 Fahrenheit quilt and like those and I was even like in the first section of the Sierra like it must have been I think it was like minus five Celsius inside my tent and like I was okay I think just because I had those so yeah and it just made it so much more enjoyable sorry I could I could talk about these for the whole podcast <laughs> but like just <laughs> could see it like because I I would see people especially like super super ultra like I definitely was not ultra light but I would say like people just really cold you know whereas I could like sit comfortably and just like feel really cozy in them you know it was like wearing a sleeping bag wearing a sleeping bag and you said minus five celsius for our americans out there who are only familiar with the imperial system uh that's probably what uh what 25 20 degrees fahrenheit do you know what i never i I got good with miles but i must say i didn't even try with fahrenheit (laughs) i had my wee like (laughs) thermometer and it kind of like you know, it had both on it, so I could kind of get a sense of what it was. Okay, so if you're wondering what the conversion in there, um, you just have to Google that. So, all right, let's very go cold. on to very cold, very cold, cold enough to wear your down pants and booties. Yeah. Okay. It's the hiking pole. Hey, it's time for the hiking pole, and that's pole spelled with two L's, as you know, like a survey, <laughs> not like the thing you carry in your hands out there. This is a seven question survey, Zippy, that's going to help me give you a score on the sanity scale, with one being completely insane and 100 being completely sane. Now, there's an automatic 25 point deduction for anybody who's done one of the American Long Trails and another five point deduction for any regular listener of the podcast. So (laughs) your total, your your, your top possible score today is uh, 70. Fair enough. Okay. Now, as you know, this is not rapid fire. It's not like word association. I'm going to ask you seven questions. I want you to give me your answer and then explain why you why you uh, gave that answer. That'll help me with my scoring to judge just how crazy you are. Okay. Okay. I'm now, ready. you know, I, I have I have several sets of questions. You know, I've got questions for maybe someone who's not been on the podcast before. They're all related to hiking. Someone who has been on, I've got another set of questions related to hiking. And then I have a a third set of questions that's related to some of the big issues that the world is facing out there. Do you have a preference? Oh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'll let you choose. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to pull from my my second set of questions about the trail. Those seem to be a big hit, I think. So Uh, you ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. So... Question number one in the hiking poll, when you're out there and with other people on the trail, what are the top three topics of conversation on the trail? Uh, Probably, well, do you know what? The most common question, when's the next water source? (laughs) That is probably like, or how much water are you taking? (laughs) Water related questions. Yeah. Yeah. When's the next water? How much water are you taking? That's very common and uh also i think we probably like fantasize about food quite a lot and like yeah town sort of activities um and i suppose i think what else do we talk about you just end up talking about the most random things out there you know but i'd say probably gear at least for me because i i love i turned into such a gear nerd like, and it, I actually didn't realize until I was out there how much of a gear nerd I was because I was obsessed with watching gear videos. And um, <laughs> yeah, like one guy like turned up and he had like this backpack and I was like, oh, is that the flex capacitor 60 to 75? And like people were looking at me and I was like, yeah, I'm a gear nerd. Like I could probably list like the grams and the cost of like every item 
but yeah so like here because i i love asking people especially if i see if they're from europe or like the uk or whatever like i love asking like you know because often like we would have different gear because like i couldn't really get like z packs and you know like ula you know all those sort of things so like sometimes we have different gear or, or like i want to ask like how did you get it because you know so yeah i'd say gear or the third one all right gear nerd what's uh what was your base weight on the pct Ooh. uh do you know what this, honestly, is, not, this it, is not a quite this is not a question on the hiking pole this is just a corollary because you've you've intrigued me with your your first answer so this is kind of a follow-up question I mean, it definitely wasn't, it definitely was an ultra light, but I did my best. Uh, it was around, I think before I started, it was around, would it be 19 pounds? I think. I do have a lighter pack list somewhere. I should have checked that before coming on here. But then, like, I, I spent all this money, like, I panicked. The last minute, I panicked and I started rebuying some stuff and, like, I got it down a little bit. But do you see, honestly, this is almost embarrassing. Once, once you're out there, at least for me and, like, my trail family we were buying ridiculous things like this big banana shirt i bought that like near palm is it palm springs or palm deal like early on i carried this the whole way to canada palm, hang on hang on palm springs and palmdale two very different places let me tell you <laughs> it's, the one, it's near it's the one near acton yeah that's palmdale Palmdale. Okay, Palm, Palmdale. Okay. Yes. Very so different than Palm there. Springs. If if you're not familiar <laughs> with the area, yeah, very very different. You might get the bends okay. uh, going between those two places too quickly. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, the one the one that's near Acton, and then yes. there was times like you know we just were carrying some ridiculous things. Like I carried a nail varnish for like hundreds of miles, and like do you know what I mean? It's funny. Like I spent all this money and like stress over like I was. I went shopping with my skills and was weighing flip flops. Like, do you know when I want you right there? You kind of like you realize like you just I don't know. You just kind of like actually I forgot what the question was. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> the original question was what was your base weight? But I oh, love okay. I love the path that we've taken here. I it love this go. idea about about <laughs> panic buying and shopping with a scale. Uh, that's I, I can so, totally see that. It did, so it did change, yeah. I changed my tent as well um, at about mile 400. So then in my head, the tent was half the way I changed to track a pole one. And then I was like, ooh, then, you know, I, maybe I can carry some other stuff. So yeah, I would say I was definitely, I mean, I wasn't super heavy, but like I carried a solar panel as well. Um, so yeah, I, was, I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't ultralight. <laughs> I like that concept of, okay, I switched out my tent and in my mind it was like half of the pack weight and now I've got a lighter one so now I can carry some more stuff. Is it, is it, again, this is not a question on the hiking pole, just a follow up. Is it better not to know how much your pack weighs? Because I think when you get into that, that mental space of knowing exactly how much everything weighs, you feel it more. Whereas if you're just ignorant and you, you, you don't know, you don't pay attention to it, maybe it's, it's a better situation to be in. Yeah, no, I don't know. It's, I think knowing the weight of my pack, like at the start, like honestly, I got really obsessed. I think a lot of people do get obsessed. Like, you know, I had the lighter pack list and I was looking at other people's lists, but honestly, like, I just know I, I couldn't do it because I'm just the coldest person. Like, I'm literally, I'm in a house, I've got a hot water bottle. Like, <laughs> I'm the coldest person ever. So, and then as well, because I was like filming out there, you know, that's why I had the solar panel. Again, that was another thing people said don't bring, but like that was great for me. I really loved having that. So I had some items that were heavier, the camera, the batteries, you know, the down pants, the down booties, you know. So yeah. What was the brand of the what was the brand of the solar panel for our listeners out there who may be interested in going that route? Do you know what? It's sitting over here somewhere. It was just from um so we have a store called the Cathlon. And I know that I think you used to get I've seen you used to get like four class. Cause like it's sort of a lot of their stuff is kind of like budget, but their puffy is really popular. And I, I saw it was like in the top ten on the PCT and the um what's it called halfway anywhere uh survey. But yeah, so it was just one of those. It was like probably like around thirty dollars or so. And um yeah, I talk, are we puffy. talking about the solar panel being puffy? Oh, the, 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 no, I was I was saying that the puffy their puffy jacket is really good and is like it's quite like affordable. But the, the solar panel, yeah, it was it was nothing fancy, but 
I just clipped it to my bag and honestly it was it, like I thought people were gonna like you know on trail I thought people would be like oh you're crazy what are you doing but everyone was like oh like uh, it, you know is it good and then I would lend people at, at lunch breaks because I'd be like especially in the desert I would plug my power bank in and do you see to make a point because I had so many people on, on my YouTube channel say don't be bringing it that's the biggest mistake you'll make but um I would plug my um power bank in and yeah by lunchtime it'd be full and then to make a point I didn't charge anything until where was it Flip, I can't remember like yeah I had you know opportunities like plug in in places and I was like I'm just gonna see how long I can go and yeah that was that was I loved having that thing fantastic taught them a lesson <laughs> yeah but you know what you see honestly if you weren't filming and editing on trail like I, you know, you I probably wouldn't bother, and especially up, you know, if you're doing the Appalachian Trail, lots of tree cover and stuff. But for see for the desert, it was just perfect. And you mentioned halfway anywhere. We've had Mac from Halfway Anywhere on the podcast a couple of times. He's he is great yeah. to talk to. He, yeah. If you don't know, if you're listening, and you're like well, halfway anywhere. What's that about? He he is a great resource for the all things PCT and CDT. He is staunchly anti. AT. So for our Appalachian Trail folks out there, I apologize, but uh, he is not interested in, in doing that trail at all. So, all right, yeah. hey, let's get back to let's get back to the hiking pole. Uh, question number two, only on question number two. Uh, oh. What is the best trail name you've encountered out there? Do you know what? That's funny because I was like, I was going to say uh, I bumped into Desert Jesus, and then I I just listened to your like short one with him after and that kind of reminded me of it but at the time I think his name just cracked me up uh I like I briefly I mean obviously he was going very fast but at the time I didn't know he was going for the FKT and he just came up to me and was like uh he's like do, do you have any local tape and I was like uh yeah I mean it's kind of all melted in my track and pull and then like he was like can you sign me on the trail register as he was like this and I was like what's your name and he's like desert jesus and i was like where are you from desert jesus and then he said he like called back and it was he was like guess when i started at canada and and i was like when and i mean this now where were we we were near uh not crater lake what's it shelter cove and he was like two weeks ago and i was like what and then he just and like i had literally just woken up from, from a nap so i was kind of laughing like we like polar opposite like styles but like he was super cool but yeah i i appreciated his trail name now zippy as you told that story i've got this mental image of of you two kind of like cross he's he crossed your path he's going the opposite direction and he never slows down the conversation just keeps getting louder you're yelling louder and louder to, to try and cover the distance that he is he's opening up between <laughs> the two of you it's exactly what it was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> and what a name too i mean he he was a, a great guy to talk to uh incredible accomplishment you know hiking yeah. the, the pct in that short amount of time and desert jesus what a name yeah <laughs> yeah i'm looking forward to hearing that full interview okay question number three toilet paper bidet leaves snow or something else uh, do you know what? I tried the wee bidet, the little one you put on a bottle, and I have to say, that is one of the best things ever. I love it. It feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> it really does, honestly. It's just, it's just so refreshing, and even like this is gonna sound really weird, but like even if you you know you weren't doing you know a poo, like just like doing it, like you know, just like refreshes you. It kind of feels like sort of you've had a shower, you know. So okay. For the day. All right. Question number four, breakfast in camp, on trail, or no breakfast? Well, I take breakfast very seriously. So we would do not only one breakfast, we did breakfast and then we did second breakfast. So I would have like oats in the morning, which like me and another girl snake me I was hiking with. We would in time make up these little bags of like homemade muesli. So good. So I'd have that in camp and then around maybe six miles in we would stop for second breakfast and then have uh well it just depends um whatever we're having for second breakfast i was kind of i love second breakfast that was like one of the best parts of the day because sometimes you'd find a really nice spot and you know we'd sit down and have a good wee break so yeah both both 
Okay. Now, you know who has first breakfast and second breakfast? No. Hobbits. Oh, Hobbits. Okay. Yeah, from Lord of the Rings. They have, they eat, they have first oh, breakfast, second something. breakfast, then they've got early lunch, then they have lunch and late lunch, and then early dinner. That's the way to do it, honestly. Yeah, like we did as well. Like, because we kind of like based our day around, it worked out quite well because they were doing like 20 miles a, a day. You know, you do like maybe five, six miles have second breakfast, and then another five, six miles have lunch, another five, six miles have second lunch, and then, you know, you have dinner when you get to come. Like, it's like the fast, Fellowship right? of the Ring out there. <laughs> I'm basically yeah. the opposite of Desert Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I said to my mom earlier because I was like, I don't know how I'm going to follow, like how I'm going to go on here because you have all these amazing record holders, and I'm like probably the record holder for the slowest PCT in the world, like <laughs> most concentrated on the PCT. The, the SKT, the SKT for the the PCT. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. Question number five. Do you prefer solo hiking or hiking with a tramway? Definitely hiking with a tramway. Easy. Yeah. Why it's is so that? Fun. I just honestly like it's yeah, it's kind of partly why I went out there. Like I really wanted to meet other hikers and I got so lucky, like the people I was hiking with, you know, I wasn't expecting so much like just to laugh so hard and uh like of course you have lots of type two fun there but a lot of it was type one fun and we just yeah like i mean we would get into town and like just like go to a brewery and just and then we oh i mean we treated ourselves like we would stay in places like with hot tubs and just you know we just oh i had an absolute blast and like you know what i can appreciate hiking on my own but like the past like year i did a hike in Menorca on my own. I did like a bike tour. I've done a few bike tours on my own. And the last one, before I decided to do the PCT, I actually was like, I kind of miss, you know, people. So I think the PCT was just perfect for that. Okay. Question number six, I want you to rank the following in your order of preference. So I'm going to give you three, three items. I want you to tell me which is your most favorite, what's next, and what's your least favorite. So here we go. Five mile severe uphill, five Ooh. mile severe downhill 20 mile roadwalk oh my goodness um i would oh dear flip me see no matter what you choose you're gonna feel like i wish i'd chosen the other one once you get started but i probably will go with the downhill i'd say five mile five mile downhill or the roadwalk but we'll go with okay i'll go downhill five miles then 20 miles uh road and then uphill okay i don't know they're kind of all i feel like they're all equally as hard but we'll go with that go with that okay all right and question number seven last question in the poll i want you to to tell me what's on your head out there ball cap floppy hat straw hat sun hoodie no hat or something else and um, so i was oh this is a heartbreaking story but i i was given you know scout like scout and frodo yes Yes. Scott. Yeah. So um, I actually arrived at their house and test positive for COVID, and I like oh, had to no. leave. I was like, I was devastated. And then he was like, "Do you have a hat?" And I was like, "Yeah," but you know, I was thinking of like maybe getting another one and or like a sun hat. And then he came out, and he had been given hats by you know Sunday afternoons. That brand. Yes. So mm -hmm. yes, we got one of those, and um, yeah, I love this hat. I carried it the whole way. I adored it. It was so good. And then I lost it, like either at the monument um, or in Canada somewhere. And I was devastated because I'm a big fan of like Scout and his book and stuff. And it was such a nice thing. Like I, I treasured that hat, you know, I left it in a bar at one point and I ended up like having to like basically like get someone to like drive. But I like paid them to drive the hat to me. And yeah, I lost it. But that's what I was wearing. I was wearing a sun hoodie as well. But yeah, that hat was great because it had like you know, the big floppy thing at the back. So you lost it and somebody drove it back out to you or you never got it back? I know, no, I, I lost it once at the Joshua Inn and then I, someone drove it to me, but then I uh, I didn't see it again after Vancouver, or somewhere between the monument and Vancouver. I can't remember exactly, but it was devastating. Oh, heartbreaking, heartbreaking. Okay. And you mentioned, mentioned Scout's book, Journeys North. 
Yes. Right. Fa- what a fantastic memoir. So good. It made me honestly, it made me cry some of it. And like he, it's so strange because there's the part where you know when is it plays or her brother like pays for her to stay on, and that's my favorite part in the book. And I was wanting to tell him this, and we were sat round because I stayed with him before going to the trail. And he got out his book and we all sat around a circle and he read a section from it. And it was that section. It was my favorite part of the book. And he read it and it was so special. And I was like, I was tearing up and I went to him after. And I was like, this is so strange because I was going to tell you tonight the, my favorite part of the book and you just read it. So, yeah, I'm a big fan of that book. That was another inspiration for the PCT. I hope that wasn't your adventure media that you're going to share a little bit later. But uh uh, definitely, if you have not read Journeys North <clears throat> by Barney Scout, man, uh, check that out. It is a fantastic depiction of life on the trail. And it's not just from his perspective. He does an incredible job of um, after he was done with his hike and during the hike, he talked to a lot of people that were around him. And he writes from their perspective as well, which is so, so good. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, sit back just for a second because I got to have to do some math. Got to use all, all 20 digits here. I've got to, uh, let's see, I got to carry the two. I've got to divide by pi. I'm going to multiply by root five. And I'm going to make, I'm going to make a slight adjustment for the magnitude of your pre-hike panic buying. And I come <laughs> up with a, a score of 53. Okay. More sane than insane. That's okay. Slightly. Slightly more sane. Yeah. <laughs> now, you have to be careful because that score can always adjust downward or upward uh, as we continue the interview. Uh-oh. All right. Hey, Ash, before we get too far down the trail, let's back up just a little bit and tell us about your background and growing up and how how did this idea of hiking the PCT capture your imagination? When when did you first realize that this might be something you wanted to do? Um, well, I suppose to go back to like how I got into the outdoors, like I was trying to figure this out the other day and I kept going back and back and I realized, do you know where it stems from? This is kind of like crazy, but do you remember Steve Irwin? Yes. I loved Steve Irwin growing up when I must, I must have been about eight or nine and uh, my like, first fancy dress in uh, like primary school, I dressed up as Steve Irwin. I like rubber snakes and everything. And like that really, like he inspired me to be outdoors. And when we got our first, you're not going to believe this. I don't even believe this story sometimes. I'm like, mom, did you just make this up that this happened? But when uh, we got our first computer, I emailed Australia Zoo. And I was like, I'm such a big fan. I need my goldfish after you and all. And believe it or not, they were when sent me mail to the house. He sent like uh, autographed postcards. I actually tried to find them. I couldn't find them around somewhere. But autographed postcards from him and Terry Irwin and like maps of the zoo and honestly like I, I still can hardly believe it to this day like that that happened and that was like I just was like wow like I was I'm still so excited about it you know and I was like 10 then so like that is what inspired me to be outdoors and then growing up like kind of adventure is always like called to me and I was generally like I was into all these different sports and I'm kind of like yeah, I wasn't really, there was nothing like sticking. I just do a wee bit, you know, do trampoline for a couple of years, dance, you know, all these different things. And then, um, yeah, then do you know what Duke of Edinburgh is? Duke of Edinburgh? Yeah. The person? Well, it, there's, so there's a Duke of Edinburgh scheme, you call it. Like, do you know what that is? No. So basically, I don't think so. So that's a scheme that is like, it's really popular in the UK. And basically um, what it is, is like, it starts when you're about 14 and it's, there's three, there's bronze, silver and gold, and you do it over like many years. And the main part of that is an expedition. And you- Oh, is this, is this similar to like Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts? If I'm not, it might be, but I'm not really too sure. Cause this, it's sort of like, you do, you have to do like a skill, you have to do a physical thing, you have to do some volunteering, and then you do this expedition. And so you have to learn like navigational skills. Yes. So for me, yes. like- Very when similar, I went, yes. Really cool. So when I went to secondary school and I heard about it, I was like, oh, so you're saying that the teachers are gonna drop me in the middle of the mountains and then I can like spend three days in the mountains? And I thought this was 
the coolest thing I had ever heard of. So like I signed up for that as soon as I could. And um, yeah, like spent two days uh, on bronze hiking and that blew my mind because I'd never walked so far in my life. And then I did silver. I must have been maybe like, I was 14 when I started it. Did silver, did gold then when I was about 18. And then I kind of like, I forgot about hiking for a while. And then, yeah, years later, I went, I was like traveling and stuff. And me and my friend, we were in Thailand. This is kind of hilarious, but we just like on a whim signed up to do this like multi-day trail. It was, a, it was guided up in like the north of Thailand and Chiang Mai. And we like, we were so unprepared. Like she was wearing like sandals, like not even hiking sandals. I was wearing like basically Converse. And we turned up, we didn't even have backpacks. We turned up with plastic bags <laughs> to do this trail, which is so, every time I think about it and we did it and we were like, that was so cool. And then, yeah, like a few years after that, then we decided it was, you'll hear me mention my friend Rachel probably a lot. She was like a big part of the kind of our exploration of like doing these like trails. So then we, um. Yeah, she said, why don't we do a hiking holiday? And I was like, I never thought of that. And then we were like brainstorming and like we came up with the Tour de Mont Blanc, which is basically like hiking around Mont Blanc through, you start in France, then you go Italy, Switzerland, back to France. And yeah, we were so unprepared. Uh, like I, I actually met up with her yesterday because we just every time we reminisce about these trips we just end up laughing because you know usually like you see people who are like unprepared for hiking they usually carry too much stuff we right. were the opposite we turned up with like like little tiny 20 liter backpacks like our rain proofs were like two for a pound festival ponchos we were like sure that'll be grand and you know, we hadn't got anything booked. We just had the flights and we basically just turned up and like, you know, yeah, our gear was like the most, honestly, it was the most basic gear, but do you know what? We, we made it, we made it the whole way around it. And, you know, I think some people would, people were laughing at us, you know, they're like, oh, there's the two girls in the red hats, you know, we were in like pink shorts and like just being really unprepared, but like we did the miles, like we, you know, we planned it in 11 days, but because we hadn't anything booked, we would get them out in refuges and they'd be full. And we ended up having to open up the guidebook to do the next day. And we were like doing two days and one. And and that there was a lot of type two fun in that because that was brutal, but amazing. And then, yeah, from there, we just we were hooked. Every single trip we did after that was basically like, what hike can we do? We did Everest Base Camp like six months later and then uh yeah we did Kilimanjaro together um and then we did the Wachi World Heritage Trail which basically ended up being it was like if you like wine you're basically hiking through vineyards for eight days and it was it was so good perfect hey, Ash you are you are totally surprising me here because when I when we scheduled this talk. I thought I was just talking to a PCT hiker who had listened to the podcast a little bit. But now I, I come to find out that you've done Tour de Mont Blanc, you've done Everest Base Camp, Kilimanjaro, hiking through vineyards. I mean, you you pretty seasoned. I've done a few. Yeah. Does Rachel also listen to the podcast? Do you know what? I actually, I, I'm not sure to be honest, but I, I don't even know if she listens to the podcast much. But I'm going to tell her to. <laughs> okay. Thank you. One more listener for me. There you go. Yeah. All right. Hey, what, before we go to break, tell us what you do to pay the bills and finance your adventures. Uh, well, I'm an animator, so I'm working on the wee show Peppa Pig at the minute, um, which is like really different than the hiking world, but I absolutely love it. You able to work from home or do you go into an office? I'm working from home at the minute because it's uh, studios in London. So, yeah, I, I miss I miss being in the studio. I'm contemplating moving over to London. I don't know. But yeah, I'm working remote at the minute. And so as an animator for Papa Pig, what what does that entail? What do you have to do? Uh well, I basically will get like 
storyboard scripts and then I bring the characters to life and the characters are kind of like puppets basically and yeah we just we move them and make them act so we're basically like actors that fit it through another character okay all right hey we're gonna take a quick break we're gonna hear from the advertisers pay some bills and when we come back we're gonna get to the pct hike and you're we're gonna we're gonna find out from you how long it exactly took and what kinds of type two fun you went through so stay tuned for that we'll be right back and yeah, welcome back we were talking to ash o'brien aka zippy um, and we've covered a lot of ground, a lot of territory in that first segment. We, we learned a lot about Ash, and I'm fascinated now to hear about your PCT hike. Um, one of the things you did not answer, I mean, you talked about how you got involved with the outdoors, but um, when did you first learn about these things called you know, long trails, uh, you know, where there's, these are walking paths where you could walk thousands of miles? And when did you decide, you know what, I'm going to do the PCT? Um, well, do you know what? I think so. My friends gave me the pot, or not podcast, sorry, um, audio book of Walk in the Woods, Bill Bryson. Yes, Bill and Bryson. Like, yep. That was the first time I'd heard, but like I said earlier, I had never considered that it would be possible for me to do. And um, basically, like, I, I'm going to try and summarize a big, terrible part of my life in a nutshell because it's a bit of a long, depressing story. But like, uh, I eventually like went to Australia. To work a good few years ago and ended up like getting really 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 unwell from like a mosquito virus and it basically ruined my life for a couple of years and i like couldn't I, like the worst of times i couldn't even leave the house like even just walk in five minutes i would be like bed bound after and <clears throat> i kind of like i wasn't able to to hike i wasn't able to do everything that i love and I had people telling me to get different hobbies, which of course I was like, that's, you don't understand. And I just was never going to accept it. So I basically, I started from the bottom, Wait, like for the PCT, like I, like some, some people, you know, that I saw me on trail would be like, so how did you train? I'd be like, my training started walking around the garden. Like I, I kind of like literally started from the bottom. Um, at the time I hadn't thought about doing the PCT, but I knew I wanted to do something like I needed to, to do something big and um because like the the trauma from that whole experience it absolutely like it kind of destroyed me and like yeah I, I find it like yeah really hard to get over that so I did a hike in Menorca hike in the circumference I did that on my own and that was kind of like trying to like I mean physically I still wasn't really in a good place I still physically wasn't in a great place when I applied for my permit for the PCT but basically I did that and I was able to shed some of the like trauma that had come with those like few years but it still wasn't enough and I, I knew I needed to do something really 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 big and um yeah like I, I I was looking at doing the Ireland way and then and then I was listening to your podcast <laughs> and I'd also like red journeys north and then like yeah i think actually i was going to do the appalachian trail and then i just hearing about uh the pct i was like i just knew that i had to do it it was like and e even like this year obviously this year has been a very difficult year for the pct and like i considered maybe i shouldn't do it this year i just couldn't i had to do it it was i like i had a meltdown I was like i'm not going to do it and then that night i booked my flights i was like i'm doing it because I just had to do it and it ended up being everything I needed to like trust my body again so yeah sorry it's a bit of a long story really to like to talk about that but it was a big part of like my like mental recovery and physical recovery as well because now I feel like I can do anything yeah, no, don't don't apologize. That, that is great stuff. And I've got a lot of follow up questions and, and points, a lot to unpack right here. First is uh, this whole concept of starting from the bottom. You know, as you know, you're you're a regular listener. So I, I try and be on the lookout for a trail name for the episode. And I think we've just stumbled across it. Starting from the bottom. Like, because yeah. that that kind of that kind of sums up, you know, where you were. Uh, physically and mentally, right? And uh, picking yourself up and moving forward 
and making progress. Also, that kind of describes your your northbound PCT hike, right? You're starting from the bottom of the U.S. and hiking uh, the entire height of it. So yeah. I think it's a very cool uh, representative title. I think it's really sums it up very nicely. And I also, I think not only from these comments that you just made, but also some of your previous comments, I mean, it just goes to show that you don't have to be in the best place physically. You don't have to have the best gear out there. I think that we are all, we all are kind of stuck in um, a, a state of inertia. You know, it's easy just to do what you've always done, uh, stick in your normal patterns. And it is, it is a challenge is a big step to say, you know what, I'm not going to wait for the best gear. I'm not going to wait until I'm, I'm, you know, in marathon shape. I'm going to, I'm going to pick up the phone or I'm going to open up my computer. I'm going to book those flights and I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And, and breaking out of that inertia of our everyday lives. I think that's also a, a, a good storyline as well. Yeah. And then finally, I haven't asked you a question. I'm just talking right now. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and next is is when I had Barney Scout Man on the podcast. He said that one of his greatest joys as an author was walking through an airport and seeing somebody reading his book and how how cool that was. And I remember telling him at that point yet that you know my goal is to have somebody. Uh, run into somebody who recognizes me or, you know, has listened to the podcast. And you kind of, you, you kind of tie all that together because not only did you meet Barney Scout Man and not only have you read his book, but you've also listened to the podcast. So it kind of like ties that all up in a, in a nice big bow for us. <laughs> yeah. So again, no question there. Just, just I'm just rambling on. Uh, <laughs> what did you say? I'm, 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 I'm waffling a bit. So. <laughs> I do a lot of waffling. <laughs> now, what did what did your parents think when you told them you're going to do the PCT? Uh, I mean, yeah, I don't think anything surprises them. Like my mom says, like, if you told me you were going to go to the moon, I believe you. Uh, but I think they were like, I mean, they were worried, you know, they're like, oh, you know, bears like. Um, and I think, yeah, my mom was a bit concerned because she's like, you've only just sort of got yourself like healthy again. You know, you could ruin it all like doing this but you know yeah they were right but they were really really supportive like they always are of my like crazy ideas <laughs> any big animals in ireland any bears out there no oh we don't even have snakes we've got i mean we've got sheep yeah we've just got lots of sheep really <laughs> nothing scary that's right who was was it saint george that uh cast saint out the snakes? Patrick. Saint, saint, saint was it saint patrick yeah okay. I thought he was just the lucky guy. <laughs> no, he got rid of our snakes, sent them all to England. <laughs> and over to you guys. Yeah, that's right. We, we've got them all over here. And Australia. Australia has, I mean, talk about things that can kill you. I mean, Australia, I think, has quite a number of those. Do you know what? I lived in Australia for like over a year. I have to say, I have never seen so many snakes as the one day come out of Scissors Crossing. Oh, my goodness me. It was rattlesnakes left, right and center. <laughs> I was a and nervous they, And they've got huge spiders down there as well. I didn't see many spiders, but wait, are you talking about in, in Australia? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw spiders there, but uh, yeah, I mean, I saw people who were like seeing tarantulas on the PCT. Like, thank goodness I didn't see anything because that's one of my biggest fears is spiders. Yeah, I saw a tarantula a couple of weeks ago crawling across our, our street as I was oh, walking the dog. Uh, and I told Mrs. Doc, and she hasn't slept since, so. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I did see scorpions, though. They're cool. You did or did not see scorpions? I, I did, yeah. I did. And it was funny enough. I was, like, cowboy camping outside uh, someone I met on the PCT, like, because I went back to San Diego. And, yeah, I was, like, sleeping outside and then woke up with, like, a scorpion, like, just there. And I was, like, uh. <laughs> All right. So any siblings, Zippy? Yeah, I've got one brother. He uh, lives in London. Is he also a PCT through hiker? No, not at all. No, no, he's, he, yeah. No one in my family are really into hiking. I mean, my family, they love traveling and stuff, but there's no one, to be honest, that's really into hiking. Okay. So we kind of heard a little bit about um, 
you doing your research, you, uh, you know, not knowing if you'll be able to do it or not, and then just taking the plunge and buying those plane tickets. Tell me about what kind of preparation you did before. What did you do physically to get yourself ready for the PCT? And um, well, like I said, it was starting from the bottom mm -hmm. for me. So, um, yeah, I kind of just was like pacing like walks, like, cause I had to be really careful at the time. Cause like I was saying, you know, I could do a five minute walk and then be really unwell for days. So like, it's kind of like where it started for me and I'd get further and further. And then, uh, I kind of started training to be uncomfortable. Like I, cause I, I, I'm always cold. I like to be warm. So I was like, I'm not allowed to use my hot water bottle. Cause like I sit and work, I get really cold. And then I'm like sitting with a hot water bottle. So, and then I was going out of my way to hike in the rain, which is not hard in Northern Ireland. Cause it's raining all the time. Uh, and yeah, camping when it was really cold. So yeah, my physical preparation was basically like doing strength work at the gym, uh, really helped and just lots of hiking. And I used to like put bricks in my backpack and, go out and that was a physical preparation there was a lot of like the other preparation basically dominated every second of my life before I left was researching gear like making spreadsheets like trying to figure out resupplies and all that sort of stuff I love that idea of training to be uncomfortable because that's I mean that's a thing right I mean you're you're gonna be uncomfortable out there and if you're if you're not comfortable being uncomfortable I think uh, that might account for someone saying, you know, this, this isn't, this just isn't for me. I'm not going to do this anymore. Yeah. You're pretty much always uncomfortable. <laughs> it's like, it's too hot. It's, it's too cold. You know, you just, yeah, but you do get used to it. And I must say when you come back, like everything seems easy after you do that. Cause I, I won't complain about anything now. Cause even, you know, yeah, like not nothing feels hard. Even things that would have felt hard, you know, like doing all your meal prep going on a Sunday, like nothing. Once you've packed boxes for Washington for 30 days worth of food, you know, on a zero, like nothing will seem hard. <laughs> yeah. So did you ship your boxes ahead of time? And how many did you ship? Or did you just plan on doing some some excursions into town? I did a wee bit of both. So like for um the first 700 miles, I actually send most boxes like from San Diego, just because I kind of like, I wanted to eat as healthily as I could on trail. So um, I wanted to have stuff that I wanted really. And then, yeah, I did a few in Oregon. And then I basically, yeah, did the whole of Washington. But yeah, in between that, there, I mean, there was a lot of time. That was, we, we liked our times. <laughs> Now, you mentioned earlier that um, trying to envision or understand the gigantic feat in front of you going, you know, 2,600 miles is tough, or co tough to comprehend when you're at the very beginning. And so what were you what were you expecting as you set foot on the trail for that first day? Um, I don't really know what I was thinking, to be honest. It was very, like, it was very emotional. Because honestly, like I was after everything like I'd gone through just to be there, you know, and I, I say this to everyone, like you should just be so proud of yourself just getting to the southern terminus, especially if you're like international, because it's such an epic feat just to get there with the visas, permits. And honestly, like if you do like even 100 miles, I just think everyone should be so proud of themselves because it's such a scary thing especially because most people go on their own it is a scary thing you know and but I think for me I was just so because I had COVID at the start my the plane lost my luggage and everything and like I like that's another start from the bottom that was me yeah like I got off and the lady was like well you might want to consider buying you uh gear and I was like and I was like, and I started saying, I've been like, pull out, I've been buying this gear for the past year. Like, and I had an air tag on my luggage and I was like, it's here. Like, I know where it is. Like it was left at the other airport, but, um, but yeah, then yeah, I was in a hotel room for like five days. I missed my start date. Cause I was like, I was pretty unwell with COVID then. And so just to get there, I was like, yes, like just have been let out of my cave. Like I was just so damn excited. And I just was thinking what's going to happen between now at this monument and being at the 
Yeah, and then it was just, it was one of the, it honestly, it was one of the best days of my life was going to that terminus and like me and like a few people, like, cause we, we got to Cleef, we stayed there and then on the night, cause we were all going to go in the morning, start up properly and we were like, who should we sneak up tonight? And we like snuck up and it was like, the sun was setting, there was like no one there, it was really, really calm and so we went to the, we went to the monument twice because we did go the next morning but that evening was just so special and I, I did it with a few people who actually I walked most of the trail with really really good friends and it was just a really special moment it was really exciting fantastic and what what a way to start I mean having COVID and then uh, having uh, potentially lost your luggage and we, we talked about your 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 panic buying and uh, all of the stuff that led up to you know acquiring all of your gear I can't imagine getting there to that moment and being ready to start and you've got to go through that whole process again of of replenishing your gear it was so thank thank goodness that you you were able to find that and and nice foresight to have a, an air tag on on your luggage highly recommend yeah now one of the things that um we don't talk an, an awful lot about and i know i've got a couple of listeners who have asked me this question is what is the cost of a pct through hike so you've got all of your initial outlay in terms of your gear but actually time on trail i mean how, how much money did you budget to have on trail the trip it's a good question and um, i researched this a bit uh, before going and I saw like there was a really good someone did a breakdown of last year like everything it was on the track somewhere but I think for me like I way over budgeted and I was glad I did because it is I mean I find it quite expensive to be honest and, and like times and stuff just for like simple things like you know a bag of chips were really expensive but um what's I I don't even know really what I I think it was about ten thousand pounds which must be about, I don't know, a bit over in dollars. I'm not really sure, to be honest, but uh, that's kind of what I budgeted because I want, I knew I wanted to not think too much about budget. Like I, if, if I wanted to stay in a place as like, you know, a hot tub with my friends and like go out for pizza and go out for beers. So I would say like, we, I mean, I think I had a good balance to be honest, like, um, but yeah, I think they used to say it was about a thousand dollars a month. Uh, okay. budget, but I think now, like I've heard it's somewhere closer to like fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a month. It was like rough estimate, but I'm probably not a good example because yeah, we did we did enjoy ourselves. You splurged a little bit. What yeah. what do you think someone could get by with for a bare minimum? Could they do it for five hundred a month? I mean, if you're gonna just I mean if you're gonna camp even in towns or just not do any zeros, then you're just basically paying for food, which would be possible. And like I did meet some people who were on very tight budgets and, you know, yeah, they weren't taking zeros. They were just getting in, you know, yeah, you could probably, you could probably could, if you really, really, really wanted to, you probably could. I think, I think Desert Jesus only spent 75 bucks. <laughs> It's because he didn't stop. <laughs> That's right. He didn't stop. <laughs> All right. Hey, the, the PCT, you know, unlike the, the Appalachian Trail, Appalachian Trail is, is called the Green Tunnel. It's, yeah. it, does, it does vary in some parts of it. But, I mean, it, you're down on the tree line the whole time. But the PCT, I, I would say, has different personalities. Yeah, uh, very different sections, different ecosystems. You've got the desert at the beginning, then you've got the Sierras, um, and you've got Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. And the variety is um, very, very different than than I would say the AT. Although you know I've, I've not hiked the full length of either one of them, so I, I could be completely wrong. This is just what I what I've gleaned from talking to people and reading. And so you know what's what was your favorite section of the PCT? Um, yeah, like you said, it's, there's a lot of variety, but, um, sadly, like we didn't get to do the full Sierra, uh, it was not in good state when we were there, as I'm sure you're, you probably know, but, um, I say I probably had most fun in the desert. I thought it was, I feel like people like, uh, don't talk about it enough, but I just thought the desert was just, maybe it's cause it's so different. 
for me, but it was spectacular. But I would say, I mean, Washington is like stunning, but it was like brutal because it was starting to get really cold when we were there. Um, oh, I would say all of it, to be honest. I think every single thing, every single day, I was blown away by something. And I mean, like, like there was times where I would cry. I would be so like, this is the best day of my life, like every single day. But if I had to choose one, um, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'll go with the desert because that was just so special. The desert. And I, you're not the first person to say that. And I've been surprised every time that <laughs> comes up because the desert just does not... You know, I haven't experienced like you have. And so I, I just have this image in my mind that it, it wouldn't be that fun. But other people have talked about how spectacular it is and how different it is. So maybe I, I need to keep an open mind and, and give that a, a chance. I think it's special as well, because at the start, like you're it's kind of funny because everyone's new. Everyone's learning their gear and like everyone's getting to know each other. It's like class of 2023. And, you know, it's yeah it's just fun and you're getting your first towns and you're meeting everyone everyone's all excited like by the time you get to like Oregon Washington like you know a lot of people are tired and um yeah like a lot of people are like dropped out by that stage as well and you're kind of you know that you're you're trying to get through you're trying to get to Canada before like it gets snowy so it gets a bit more you know you're doing bigger miles and you know you're trying not to like waste as much time whereas yeah the desert we just yeah I mean, we had fun the whole way through. Like, it was just a blast. Now, in, in the 2,600 miles, any type two fun that you ran into out there? Um, I mean, yeah, like, to a certain extent, like, all of it. <laughs> because it's like I was saying, it's not comfortable. You know, like, you're, you're never comfortable. But, I mean, there's a couple of times, actually, like, probably the most I've laughed after something happened. This is terrible. But uh, we got like attacked by Africanized killer bees um, in California. And yeah, this guy, I only found out afterwards what they were. Someone like knew all about them, but basically, um, yeah, we were like hiking along. Actually, it was near, um, you know, the Whitewater Preserve bit. So we were hiking along there and it was kind of like, do you know the parts of the trail where you're kind of going along the mountains like that? And then there's a big drop off the other side. And so there's three of us and I was ahead and like these two bees were like doing something in front of my face. And I was like, what is going on? They weren't attacking me. They were just doing this. And later on, I find apparently that is what they do when they're signaling to the like swarm to come and attack you. So I'm like, what is happening? And next thing I get swarmed by these bees and they're like going in my hair. They're like all on my face. And I was like, what is going on? And the next one I heard screaming from behind me and I looked around and and my friend Jana who snake me it's her trail name she was like oh, I get attacked and then she's like they're in my hair and she was screaming so I ran up to like help her and like got the bee out of her hair it came into my hair and then I like threw my hat this is another time when the hat nearly got lost I threw my hat I threw my sunglasses and I sprinted and both of us were like screaming and then <laughs> Oh dear, this is terrible. I I I I, I still laugh so much of this, but our friend Vortex, who like she's like the funniest person in the world. But so she, we're saying her, we decide to wait to warn her. So she comes round, so she's in the distance. We're at this side of the mountain, and I'm like, like Vortex, watch out for the bees. And she's like, what? Angry bees. And she's like, what? These bees? And next thing. She oh, there's a video of it somewhere like on my YouTube. It's so funny. She is screaming and running and like, and me and Yana are just like we're we're like run and we're laughing like it's terrible, but it was so funny. And I was like, if you if you see my sunglasses, and then I'm like, no, no, she's not gonna stop. So yeah, like yeah, she caught up with us. Like strangely enough, like everyone got stung. Like we were talking to people later on, like at camp, and everyone got stung. I managed not get stung, but. I had to go back then to get my sunglasses. Like Yana picked up my hat. I had to go back to get the sunglasses. So I had to put on all my like waterproof trousers. Like, you know, I had this much that you could see. And it was, they were aggressive bees. I've never, never seen anything like it. 
Wow, what a story. And I love the fact that you're laughing at the misery of one of your friends out there. That's, that's oh, fantastic. You would. Yeah, if you saw the video, honestly, I'm still showing people that video. My mom said that she played it like 10 times. She sent it around to her friends. If I can, I'll send you the video because it's just, honestly, even 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 Vortex laughs. And it was her that was like you know, being attacked. Yeah, we've got to see that for sure. For sure. <laughs> now, hey, did you ever find yourself out on the trail thinking, what am I doing out here? This, this has gotten so bad that I'm not sure that I can go on. Did it ever get to that point? Do you know what? I have to say, I not once did I think of quitting. And I, I thought at some stage, there's going to come a point where I think about quitting. I never thought of quitting, but I did have probably the worst time of my life, like um, near Apache Peak. Um, I was camping at Apache Springs and I got like so cold and my hands got so cold that they got really, really painful. And I was like, just sobbing into my quilt and ended up, I don't really know what happened, but I couldn't for weeks, I couldn't even touch my fingers and my nails went all black and everything. So I don't know if it was like a type of like frostbite or something, but yeah, I could honestly, like my hands were sore for weeks. And that at that point I was curled up sobbing and I was like, this is like week two. And at that point, I thought the only thing that would get me off trail is the cold. Uh, I still didn't think of quitting though, but it was, it was, it was honestly, it was one of the most painful things I've ever experienced in my life was my hands on that night. It was brutal. Quilt sobbing in week yeah. two. That, that's a... <laughs> uh, that... <laughs> I feel so bad for the guys. I was like hiking Yikes. this with two guys and they were like, uh... Are you okay? And I was like, ah, ah, like just saying, I'm okay, like stopping. Like <laughs> I think they didn't know what to do. Like, and then my tent imploded, and like, yeah, it was it was rough. Like, <laughs> like fell apart three times in the middle of the night. So we we referenced a couple times the slowest known time for the uh, the PCT. Let's talk about logistics. When did you when did you start? When did you finish? How many zeros? Oh dear. Um, I started April 20th. And so keep in mind that I had to skip like about 600 miles. So I ended on about 2000 in the end. Uh, I finished on the 23rd of September. So I'm not sure how many zeros, but a lot. <laughs> but I mean, you know, within racing, like we would kind of do maybe like you know, each section, maybe like a hundred miles and take a day off. And honestly, like, you know, I saw a lot of people, you know, rushing and not taking zeros and like, I don't know, it's, you know, what, it's hike your own hike. It really is. But for me, honestly, some of those experiences, like the one I sent you earlier about the 49er saloon, like we just had so much fun and I wouldn't change it for the world. And I said at the start, I was very much, I had my spreadsheet for making it to Canada, hike it every mile. And I was like, but that's going to mean leaving this group really and just going on my own. And I just see by the end, I don't care if, if I wasn't going to make it all the way, I wouldn't change a thing because that experience was just, oh, it was just the time of my life. It was so a lot of zeros. Yeah, and let's talk about the end. I mean, what, what's going through your mind as you're approaching the northern terminus? And a uh, follow-up question to that when you're finished telling us, uh, what did you learn about yourself going through this experience? Um, I mean, yeah, at the end, it was bizarre because I think the strangest thing was opening up the Far Out app and seeing the end. And I, I was like, wow. And then it was so strange because I knew I kind of seen so many videos of this northern terminus and like how the trees like you know there's the gap and I saw the gap coming and I was like oh. and I was like it's you yeah I got I got so emotional and then I got even more emotional because I realized there's two people who I started the trail with I hadn't seen them like since Oregon I think was the last time I'd seen them since Cascade Locks and they were at the terminus and they had no idea that I was coming I had no idea they were there and like I saw them and I just like cried my eyes out so it was a lot of emotions because you kind of like, I didn't want it to finish, but at the same time, it was tough near the end. We had like fires, we had snow. I mean, it was, it was pretty tough going at the end. Um, yeah, it was a lot of emotions. What was the second question? 
what did you, what did you learn about yourself having gone through this? Um, I mean, I learned that I'm pretty tough, a lot tougher than I thought. Um, and honestly, like, I feel like you no, know, I didn't go out there like find myself really. I was, you know, I I'd done a lot of that in previous hikes, but yeah, I suppose I learned. I learned, yeah, that I'm I'm pretty stubborn. I think as well, you know, um, and honestly, like, I think mentally very, very strong. I think, you know, that's something I learned. Like, I, I just, I, yeah, I just was able to just get through it, even on the hard days, you know, just like, I didn't really like, complain too much. I just, and I never thought of quitting, never, even, even when I was sore, even when I was in pain, even when I was cold, you know, just, yeah, I was just, I was very, even when you, even when you were quilt sobbing yeah yeah it was just honestly I was just so happy like I I just I think especially because of my experience beforehand of having years of like not being able to do what I wanted to do I was just so grateful and and that's partly why like people ask me like how have you adjusted to going home and like I just tell them like I I know a lot of people get post-trail depression and like I am sad I miss the trail but I can't be sad because I'm just so happy and so grateful that I was, I'm going to get emotional, but like talking about it, but like, I'm just so grateful to have had that experience and really grateful of my body for being so strong and getting through it. So I was just very happy out there. Still am. Now, Zippy, my, one of my final questions to you, um, are you hiker trash? <laughs> um, I mean, I haven't slept in, have I slept in a, in a pit toilet? No, I haven't slept in a pit toilet, but yeah, I mean, like some of, like I look back at photos, like you know, I went into a brewery in Cascade Locks, and I was like just caked in dirt, like absolutely disgusting. So actually, the funny story about about hiker trash was we were like night hiking. This was after being in the Joshua Inn, so um, it was it was a bit of a late one, and um, there was this like big steep bit down that we thought we might be able to find somewhere to camp and like guys hiking with atlas the tree stumper was his name he uh, went down and, and we were like is it good and he calls out and he says i don't know there's just a lot of trash it turned out he genuinely thought it was a lot of trash it turned out it was a load of cowboy um campers and it just cracked me up so much because he's like it's just a lot of trash and then he paused oh no wait it's hikers it's hikers <laughs> that's like literal hiker trash because he thought it was just like literal hikers, but yeah that's fantastic <laughs> so we mentioned a couple times uh your youtube channel and videos on your youtube channel let's talk about the ash o'brien outdoors youtube channel what can people expect to find on there um well at the minute i just posted my last video of getting to the terminus um basically yeah i documented the whole thing on the trail it was kind of like a journal really for me but something I really wanted to like share in that was kind of the heart and the spirit of the PCT so I kind of did a lot of like documenting my trail family and it's very honest you know like I talk about when things are hard like I, I show us you know getting like vortex and like saloons and it I think you know I was yeah, I'm pleased with how it turned out because I, I mean, like I'm an animator, so I work in like, you know, TV and like I like to make things really perfect. And I knew when I made the decision to film an edit on trail rather than doing it after, I knew that it was going to be rough and raw. And I'm, honestly, I'm kind of happy with, with that because at first I was like, oh, I want to be able to like, you know, export this at the highest quality and do all these effects and all. But in the end, it's like, you know, those voiceovers, like I did a lot of voiceovers in it like they were recorded literally like on trail and um yeah interviewing like people and like the story unfolded as it happened and you know there's q and a's in there and it's just fun like i've watched them through like i'm watching them at the minute like for the first time since being off trail and even though i'm like mm, you know i could I could tweak that audio tweak that bit but it's just it's a load of fun and the last episode had like a lot of flashbacks and like yeah, that last episode, I'm I'm pleased with that because I actually did get to make that on a computer, not on my phone. So that's basically it. There's going to be a lot of stuff coming up about gear and stuff as well because that's something that I like to hear about. So I'm going to talk a lot about my gear and how it worked out. 
What a fantastic resource for people who are considering hiking the PCT. Uh, having you know, check, checking out the the video and the the voiceovers and all of the great information from an animator, professional uh, out there, professional who works in the industry, who has put this together from her experience out on the PCT. So I encourage everybody to check that out. Yeah, it's just it's just a bit of fun. I must say, there's I think my favorite comments, although the comment got deleted, was. Uh, <laughs> Someone apparently said just a load of drunks hiking 10 miles a day. And I, I wanted to say back, uh, excuse me, a load of drunks hiking 20 miles a day. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did like some people did say, you know, you won't make it to Canada or you look like you're more into partying. But, you know, like we we got there in the end, you know, like we just, yeah, we weren't the fastest, but yeah, we just enjoyed it, you know. So, yeah, I think I want to say I think it shows a lot about about the truth of what it's like to be out there and with people and hopefully it gets across and, and as well sorry I'm waffling on now but I wanted to show that it doesn't matter where you start if you think that something like this is un, unobtainable for you like honestly like yeah I started like I said I started from the bottom and like just believe in yourself that you can do it and you know just go for it nice now what's next for Zippy what's the next big adventure uh, I mean, I'm definitely going to do the AT, I think, in 2025. I already started planning that in my head. Like, in the second week, I was like, I love this. Uh, I want to do all of them. But I do want to go back and finish the Sierra. But I finished, like, my contract in March 2025. And when I saw that, my contract, I was like, they're basically making me do the AT because that's a perfect time. So, yeah, that's 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 a long-term goal. So, But in the meantime, like, there's some... Um, hikes I'll probably do in Europe and the UK and I want to like do more biking and I do a bit of bike packing and yeah. All right. Well, future triple crowner, Ashley O'Brien. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is it Ashley or Ash? It is or Ashley, Ash? but yeah. Okay. You know Ashley. What? Okay. calls me Ash. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Hey, Ash, you know where we are right now? Is this the, uh, the pro tip? Hiking hacks. That's right. It's time for Zippy to share some trail wisdom with our listeners to make their next outdoor experience even better. Did you were you able to hang on to at least one hiking hack that you can share? I've got two. If I can sneak it in. Okay, let's hear them. Okay, well the first one's a short one, but this is like this is one of the best tips I can ever provide. And it's three words: pack out pizza. It is the, honestly, it's the best thing because at some point you're going to get sick of your trail food. Pizza, when you're in town, order a second pizza, put it in tinfoil, then you don't have, you have hardly any trash. It is delicious cold. And I think one of the best things about that, you don't have to cook. So the first day back in trail, you can have dinner, you don't have to cook. And honestly, like, yeah, I did that like every time. And every time I was like, oh, I could hardly wait till dinner because I would have like pizza. So that, that's, that's my number one tip. Magical. Three words, pack out pizza. <laughs> Nice. You'll thank yourself for it. And the, the slightly more wisdomy one, I would say, like, take people's advice, listen to people's advice, but also, you know, listen to your own wisdom because at some stage when you're planning for it, you'll you'll probably start to like doubt yourself, and you'll be watching all these videos, and you're like, oh, you know, and you start to forget that you know you know what you're doing. Like, you know, if you're planning this, you probably know what you're doing, and. For me, the perfect example of that is those down pants, those down booties. You know, people were saying, don't bring it. Solar panel, people were saying, don't bring it. And like, I know me. I know what I need. And in the end, you know, I think, yeah, I, I knew more what I was talking about than I gave myself credit for because I was getting psyched out. So that's another thing, like try not to be too intimidated by watching all these ultralight pack unless you know you don't you don't need to have a z packs duplex like you don't you know you can you know yeah you don't need the fanciest lightest stuff you know you can yeah you can do it you can do it those are two great tips thank you so much so there you have it we are just about done here hope our listeners enjoy our time with zippy we want to thank her for joining us this week ash how can our listeners keep up with you on social media and where can they keep track of your latest adventures uh, well, it's Ash O'Brien Outdoors on YouTube and Instagram. That's kind of, yeah, where I'm 
posting things. I've still got a few more videos today. I've got like a reunion episode coming up, which should be really exciting with uh, we all met up again in San Diego and made cocktails. So uh, yeah, that's that's where I'm at. Okay. Remember to check out Hacker Trash Radio on social media as well. We are on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you have comments or clips you want to share, you can send it to me at hackertrashradio at gmail.com. Off the beaten path. Now, unfortunately, Zippy, we can't always be on the trail. And when we're not, we need to find a way to get our adventure fix. So I'm going to ask you to share some outdoor adventure media with our listeners to help them get by. This could be a book, movie, documentary. We call this segment Off the Beaten Path. And I'm already going to stipulate that people should check out Ash O'Brien Outdoors as well as Journeys North. Do you have anything else for us? Um, I mean, well, like I would always recommend this podcast to people because you learn so oh, much. Thank you. Honestly, I've learned like... Yeah, even listen, I was listening to Coldzilla's uh, episode the other day and like he had some really good practical tips. But yeah, I learned a lot in this podcast. But uh, yeah, Journeys North, what, I wrote down one. Uh, yeah, I really liked the book Unlost by Gail Muller. She hiked the Appalachian Trail and like she overcame some serious obstacles. So for me, it was super inspiring because like me, she basically started from the bottom and she overcame uh, a lot of adversities to make it on that and it was a really inspiring story so if you are someone who maybe feels like you're not capable of doing something like that that will inspire you and that inspired me to dream big and make a ridiculous goal like the PCT and another one which actually I heard someone else recommend in this podcast was uh well I like bits of the book, some of it I don't agree with, but You Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. I find that when I was listening to that, I listened to that on trail and it kind of made me feel like, you know, bits that were hard. I was listening to him and I was like, this isn't hard. So it kind of like, yeah, it, it was quite inspiring as well. And that first one was Unlost? Yeah, Unlost, Gail Muller. Yeah, I just find that really, really inspiring story. All right, we'll have to check that out for sure. Thank you so much for that. What have we not asked you? And you know, it's our last segment. Uh, before I let you go here, is there anything that we've missed? What have I not asked you that you're dying to tell us about? Um, well, do you know what? If I was listening to a podcast with someone who has filmed on trail, like, I suppose I could maybe mention, like, uh, how I made it because I it's something that I really wanted to know before I went and um I don't know is that interesting I don't know sure <laughs> yeah so like I mean I'm still like trying like I'm always testing different methods and learning but um I use the GoPro on trail and I use a little SD reader for my phone because you can transfer by bluetooth but then you're draining two devices so I used that and then I edited everything on Kind Master and then um, put it on YouTube. So that that's how I, I edited because, yeah, I was trying to find, like, how do people do this on trail? And, God, it's it's bloody hard work, I'll tell you that, is editing on trail. Like, it's, it's I said to people, it's it's almost like doing two, three hikes is editing and filming on trail. It's a big commitment, but I'm really pleased I did it. Um, yeah, and that's how I did it. So if you're... I mean, I might do a video of that at some point, but yeah. Yeah, hiking the hike is hard enough, but, uh, you know, editing on trail and putting stuff out, that's even, you know, it's an added layer of complexity. So thank you for sharing your insight on that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> All right. Hey, we are finished. Thank you for coming on the podcast, Ash. We wish you the very best in your future adventures. And we'll hope you'll consider coming back and sharing some more stories with us sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And thanks for making the podcast. Because it certainly, like, yeah, I learned a lot from it. I honestly, I was, like, taking notes listening before I went to PCT. So, yeah, thanks for thanks for what you do. Oh, thank you so much. As we close up, do you have any shout outs to friends and family? Uh, well, yeah, big shout out for my mom and dad for putting up with me. Like, uh, I was going to list everyone in my trail family, but it was so big and I'm scared of missing anyone. So, yeah, my trail family, trail angels, and just generally everyone in the country you live in, I think they're the friendliest people in the world. And I've traveled a lot. People were so nice to me on trail, off trail, so supportive. Uh, 
yeah, yeah, to all the friendly people that helped me on the PCT. Okay. Well, hey, thank you for tuning in. Always remember, the trail is the trail. It doesn't care if you want to go downhill. It doesn't care if it's almost dark and you're looking for a campsite. It doesn't even care if you're tired from laughing at Vortex getting attacked by killer bees. <laughs> the trail is the trail. Embrace <laughs> the suck. Classic. Thank you.